Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. Hello, everybody. Where we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. And today, we want to talk to you guys, just us, no guests today, about the power of proximity. The power of proximity. It's been said that you earn an average of, the, of your five closest friends, right? The people you spend the most time with, you earn on average what they earn. It's kind of the circle that you hang around. We believe that not only is it true financially, but it's also true mentally. I think that mentally speaking, our mindset speaking, we're the average of the top five that we associate with on a regular basis, right? Yeah. People, you know, people either bring you up or they bring you down or they make you feel neutral. And sometimes that can be really challenging because that person that's maybe bringing you really down is somebody that's a very close family member and it's hard to separate yourself yeah. from that person. I think, it's, I think first of all, it's, it's probably <laughs> most important to us, you know, why do you have to have a good, good mindset? I think it starts there. Like why people say, yeah, so I have some friends who are negative. So what? Like big deal. But I'm not negative. I can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, but, but we become like the people we associate with. We, we just become like them. That's, that's what, that's what association is, why we're friends, why we have similar values and that kind of stuff. But the truth is, if you want to elevate your game to a different level, you're going to have to elevate your mindset first. If you don't get your mindset elevated, it's it's the same reason that so many people, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I think it's like 92% or 95% of people that win the lottery are broke within five or seven years. And these are people that squander away millions, like tens of millions of dollars, or even hundreds of millions, they squander it away because mentally they're just not prepared. Now you could argue and say, well, but they just don't know how to manage money. You don't have to be that great at managing money to, to keep your hands on to $50 million. You know what I mean? But there's a, there's something inside their psyche that just makes them get rid of it, or they just don't, they're not mentally ready to make that kind of money. And for, for whatever reason. I mean, sometimes people think they don't deserve it. You know, they don't deserve to have a better lifestyle than how they were raised or whatever. Or, or, so they, they get rid of it even like, like subconsciously. Yeah. Well, that, that's always true. Right. So that, and the same thing with the same with money, same thing right. with, same thing with good feelings. I think people, when you're around people that are negative all the time, you don't want to start feeling like you want to go for your goals. Cause when you go for your goals, you're, you're, you're a different person. Yep. When you want to go for your goals and reach your goals, you're different. And if you are somebody that's always gone for your goals, you know what I mean? You will start to pull away from the pack and be different than your friends. If you're sitting around your friends and your family and you find it's the same old negative conversation about the jobs they hate and their the glory days back in high school or the you know negative talk about somebody who's successful, um, that's that's common around around people that are not successful to sit around and bash people that are successful. And if that's the mindset you have, that's what you start to think because you you become like those you associate with. And mentally speaking, you'll never be successful, right? And because you might even be sitting there like subconsciously that sinks in and goes, well, if I go after my dreams and I become successful, this person won't be my friend anymore. Right. Amber and I uh, went to a mastermind with Tony Robbins, uh, a, a business business mastery class. Yeah. And uh, I he talked about the power, a power of proximity. And his story was that he was a young kid that had, you know, he was just starting to make some money. And in his, in his world, he was making about a million, about a million bucks a year in sales or something. And uh, that's not probably net, but he had to, he was invited by, and I forgot their names now, but the, it was like a, a jet a full of well, guys. Yeah, but it was, I forget what, um, you know, the names, I can't think what the guys are, the big, big Wall Street tycoons. And they invited him to come along on this, on this thing. And they said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to go to this country, this country, we're going to stop here and stop here. And he said, well, okay. He's trying to act cool. He said, well, how, how much is that going to cost? He goes, I don't know. We're, we're all going to split it probably 40 grand each, something like that. And he thought, I'm not going to do 40 grand, but he, he mustered up together and he spent that time with them because being around them made him start to think differently about life. And I can tell you from our personal experience that, you know, if we sat around and talked to people that lost money in real estate or that were not happy or not successful or weren't great, weren't happy with their family or whatever it might be, <clears throat> it starts to bring you down and you start to have those negative thoughts. And so it's really important that for Amber and I, we're around people. We recently joined a mastermind about a year ago. And when we're around people that say, yeah, you know, I, I profited $3 million last year, or I profited, um, you know, 1.2 million, or I did, I saw, I saw a post yesterday that said, well, you know, we did 50 deals last month. And I'm like, you put 50 houses under contract last month. I did a hundred for the year. 
again, when you're around people that think differently, you say, how did you do that? And all of a sudden, you know, we're real big believers in saying, how can I wear it on my wrist? We give these away at our workshop. Um, it says, how can I, and also has our values of living on there. And, you know, when someone's around you talking about something bigger, a lot of people will say to themselves, well, how could I get there? And it changed your mindset. But if you're never around those people, you never even get the idea, right? Because they don't, they don't elevate your thinking. And we also kind of get stuck in our own reality too. Cause like when we join that mastermind, you really have to check your ego at the door because, you know, like we realized when we went there, oh, we're kind of like big fish in a small pond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then when you, when you get around those other people, like Glenn was saying, you, you elevate your thoughts, you elevate your game, you, you know, want to rise to the challenge. But I, and when I hear that expression, you know, power is the power of proximity, like my mind automatically goes to thinking, you know, that expression is not what you know, it's who, you know, and like, like bigger people. Yeah. And, and I think what's even more applicable though, and those, those relationships are important and it's good to try to get yourself around those, those people that are thinking bigger, but I think even a more applicable um, thing to talk about today is the people that you're just around every day too, you know, and, right. and how that can change your life by changing, you know, either the, the people that you're around or limiting the time that you're around them. You know, there's some people that, you know, you're not going to be able to like totally get out of your life, especially if they're um, a family member, but there, there are toxic relationships even within families. So you want to limit your time and maybe, you know, love that person from a distance. And like a good question you can ask yourself when you're, you know, at home or on the weekends or your friends are over or whatever, you know, how do you feel when that person leaves? Do you feel drained yeah, <laughs> or right. do you feel elevated? Like, oh, that was such a good time. I had a great time. I it really got my wheels turning. Yeah, and, do they leave and you go, I'm exhausted. Yeah, like, I didn't oh. leave the couch for an hour. And I'm exhausted because that person just bitched and pissed Draining. and moaned. And you're like, oh my God. But when you allow that in, I think what you said is great. I think to, to give you guys a tool, right? One of the things you want to do is you, first you want to kind of assess where you are. So you want to sit back and assess your relationships and assess your closest friendships and your closest relationships. Do they empower you? And, and the same people that might uh, not meet up to your average of income you want to earn, if you want to earn $300,000 a year, a million dollars a year, $10 million a year, $100 million a year, whatever your goal is, you know, you want to start getting around those kind of people because they're going to make you think, they're going to elevate your thinking. You think differently. But the same thing, but but the same person that will help make you feel better may not be a person that makes the kind of income you want to make. So it's okay to have a different circles of people, right? I have to talk about my, one of my best friends and um, he, uh, he works for the, for a school district around here. We've been friends since first grade and he could care less that we're millionaires. He could care less that we're, that we have built these businesses and that he, you know, he's, not that he could care less, he's happy for me. I shouldn't say he couldn't care less. He couldn't care less that he doesn't treat me differently. We're right. still we're still like little boys. We get together. We still have a lot of fun. And he doesn't have any weird feelings towards me. And you know, when I when I get down with him, I feel elevated. We have good conversations and um But and then I, you have another childhood friend that you've known almost the same amount of time as him that a few years ago, as we were starting to become more successful, yeah. that friend cut you out of his life. Yeah, he did. So that was difficult. Uh, that was not a fun experience to go through. But yeah, we were friends for over 30 years. And one day he just didn't return my phone calls. And we talked almost every day and for 30 years. And uh, uh, maybe not 30 years, but, you know, a, a lot. We talked as we got to be adults. We talked at least two or three times a week. And yeah, one day I called up and he just was uh, he wouldn't return my phone calls and finally got a hold of him. And, it, you know, I, it was a very I don't want to air it all here on here, but it was a very, very emotional time. I was like, you know, it was like literally breaking up with me. I'm like, what are you? what are you talking about? And um, he was convinced that I ha had ill will towards him. And I so didn't, I'm just the product of four boys. And I like to pick on, I tease, I pick on people. That's kind of what people pick on me. It's, that's how my friendships are. And so it had been that way for 30 years. So I don't know. So whatever reason, at one point in the conversation, I remember saying, um, is this because we're successful? Like it's because I'm getting success. And I remember him saying, I thought about that. But no, I thought, well, the fact you even thought about it just makes me think. So, you know, that person's not in my life anymore. And I have, you know, 30 years of great memories there, but not there in my life anymore. And that relationship was probably going to pull me down rather than bring me up. Right. right. So I think it's really important that you, number one, here's kind of some steps for you today. Number one is to evaluate your current situation, evaluate your current relationships. And I would say two things. One is, what are people earning that are around you? Right. If you want to earn more money, you're going to have to get around people that earn more money. And you have to start. Remember, it's an average. 
So if you've got people that earn $50,000, $70,000 a year in your circle or whatever the number is for you, and you want to move to $150,000 for yourself, you're going to have to get a couple of people that are in the two to $300,000 range in that group, right? You're going to have to get up there a little higher to increase your average, right? Right. So if you increase your average on that, then you'll start to think differently because now your circle of friends, when you have your parties and whatnot, have them over, right? Have some people over to your house, start to build new relationships with people. And that can be uncomfortable. You know, starting new yes. friendships, you know, you have to, you know, what's that saying? You know, life uh, is life starts outside your, outside comfort, of your zone. comfort zone. Yeah. So it can be uncomfortable to start developing those new friendships, especially if those people make more than you. You know, you might have like money feelings, right? Mm -hmm. A little complex about it. You think they're different. I'm telling you that money doesn't make you different. Money, doesn't, no. money, money just makes you makes you more of what you already are. I love that. That's one of my favorite things that you say um, that money makes you more of what you already are, because if you're. If you're a good person by nature you're and you're giving and generous, money is going to make you even more. more generous and you're able to help more people. But if you're a big jerk, you're you'll just going to be a, giant, be a bigger giant jerk prick. with money. You'll be a giant prick with money because you'll have control and you think you have power and you can talk down to people and that kind of stuff. So that's so all can, that is. It can be really uncomfortable to start developing those friendships and relationships. And, you know, it might be through your kid's school and you know other parents of you know trying to like you know strike up a conversation at a basketball game I mean, there, there's some simple steps you could take with people or you might join something like toastmasters or a local chamber or you know but you you want to do things that are gonna get you in front of other people and other groups and then what amber said so true though that's that was that was a very good thing you said because i was thinking the same thing when you said it you you've got to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You're when you're with your existing friends, you're very comfortable. You're comfortable, right? You can share things, you can be goofy, you could have a couple of drinks and loosen up. You could rip one, you could do you know, whatever you do. I mean, you know, you could, you're that comfortable. You could burp, do whatever, you know what I mean? You could be a slob and then they okay, laugh. Please and, don't do that, even around the people that you're comfortable with, okay? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, but I'm a guy. So it's, you know, so I'm just saying there are, there are, you could be yourself, you could be comfortable and, and just, and whatever. And, you know, again, you could make a total screw up and laugh at yourself and you wouldn't be embarrassed because you'd be like, oh, they've known me. You're comfortable. Well, the truth is, if that those relationships aren't taking you where you want to go, I'm not saying you get rid of them. Just enhance your circle and start to get around people that have what you want. So number one is evaluate everything you've got, right? That's the first thing I would say is evaluate where you currently are. Evaluate your current situation. And like Amber said, ask yourself with every person, do I feel energized when I'm with them and after they leave or de-energized? Like, do I feel a sense of relief when they walk out the door? Or we get excited when they come in the door because then we're going to talk about goals and dreams and, and go after stuff, right? What or are they going to are they going to challenge me to think? So I think number one is evaluate. And then also you want to be the kind of energy you want to attract. So if you know if you catch yourself being negative and if you're the one that when you leave the room people feel drained, yeah, you know that's something that you need to work on within yourself because you want to provide you know, that good feeling to the other people around you too. And people aren't going to want to. It's going to be difficult to make friends if you're draining. So I, I'm thinking about my pen that's falling apart because I'm making notes while you're talking. So um, hold on one second. I mean, that that whole energy thing is really important because if you're wanting to to start these and, and developing new friendships can be kind of like dating. I mean, there's also that like fear of rejection too. You know, if I strike up a conversation with this person and they blow me off, you know, how is that going to make me feel? But again, it's that uh, the matter of, um, you know, being willing to kind of put yourself out there and even get hurt possibly if, or, you know, just be ready to deal with the rejection if it comes along. But, you know, because not, ev not every relationship you try to start is going to turn out successful, but no. you want to keep going until you find the right one. I think what you said too is great. When, when on my door is a sticker that when we first started our company, Vester Pro, one of our um, <clears throat> assistants who worked for us, Ashley, she was, she was great. She was fresh out of college. We were, we were her first job. And uh, she put these stickers around the door and she may not know this. She may hear this and, and laugh, but she put a little, little sticker on the door that said, be the energy you want to attract. She put it on my door handle. I put it up at my eyesight level. So when I walk in, I can read it every day. And it reminds me to be the energy you want to attract. So Amber always says, when you walk into a room, Glenn, you definitely have a power about he, you. He, Glenn has a very strong energy. And, you know, some people are more sensitive to taking on other people's energy. And so if Glenn's in a... If he's in a mood. Well, that thankfully that never happens. <laughs> oh, of course not. If he's in a mood, like the entire room will feel it, even if he doesn't say a word. His energy is very strong. But the same is true if he's in an up mood. Yeah. You know, if he's in a good mood and if things are going, you know, if he's in that positive mindset, 
then everybody around him starts to feel energized and it's it's very very um transparent i guess so just give me some kind of some steps right we said one is evaluate your current friendships do they make you feel great do they make you feel worse like sort of make a list and just say do i feel great or do i feel de-energized and again decide you have you have if you if they're in your family, like Amber said, you may have to love people from a distance. You can distance yourself a little bit without severing a relationship. I'm not saying sever a relationship, but I'm saying that just be very careful. If you have toxic relationships, you're going to have to get rid of those relationships because they will only bring you down. You will never be able to be successful if you're in a toxic relationship. So number one is evaluate. Number two is be the energy you want to attract, right? Be the person you want to attract. If you act like that person and mentally get to that place or start reading success books, start listening to podcasts like this, start being on, watch YouTube, uh, come to some of our trainings, right? Whatever they might be, um, go to trainings of other things that you like, whatever it might be. When you start to elevate, you're going to have different conversations because you'll have a different reference point. When you meet somebody that shares your common interest and you start to have a conversation and you are educated because you've been preparing yourself like a like an athlete you're preparing yourself by reading by getting better by learning and you can say oh did you ever read the book by so-and-so oh you did oh me too and all of a sudden what do you have something in common a connection right you have a connection because you've been preparing yourself and that's what i wanted to say is number three is to get out of your comfort zone right like amber said you have to leave your comfort zone and leave your comfort don't don't have to leave your comfort friends appreciate them and have those comfort days they're awesome but find a few other friends you can start to have some some a new comfort zone with and get used to them, right? Because again, when you're in conversations where people talk about being broke or talk about how they can't afford to pay their bills or how they can't stand the man or they, you know, they can't stand the taxes, they can't stand the can't stand the president, can't stand the if everybody around you is just negative, negative, negative all the time, you will get sucked into that. You will get yeah. sucked into that. And so even you, the strongest person can get sucked into that. Even the most positive person, you, you, you surround yourself with that many negative people. You're going to feel it. Yeah, it will. It will suck the life out of you. So make sure that you get out of your comfort zone and meet some new people that share common interests of where you want to go. Because if you're in a conversation, we talk about with our kids, our kids hear us talk about millions of dollars on a regular basis, right? We have millions of dollars in house. We do millions of dollars here. And that's a, that the word million was never brought up in my house growing up. We never had that. Someone said that, you know, it was a million. It was like, Oh, that person's a millionaire. Oh, like that was a big deal. And now it's like, so like that in the world that we're in now, it's not like that anymore because, because our verbiage has changed. Our vernacular in our world has changed. So our kids are hearing a very different they don't hear us say we can't pay the bills this month. They hear us right now. It's as we're putting this together. It's during COVID. We're like mad we can't, we haven't traveled this year, right? We're having we haven't done that, or we're we're talking about the home we want to build on the ocean, and we're talking about those kind of things and how we're going to make these things happen. And you know, we we discuss we discuss possibilities, not things that we're restricted in. Yeah, not I mean, things we can't do. And our kids hear a positive energy. That's what they hear, and people around us hear it too. Yeah, and that's you can you know you live in your own reality. So like when I was a kid. You know, I used to hear all the time, you know, if I wanted something, oh, I can't afford that. We can't afford that right now. And I, I hear people say that to their kids a lot. And that's not something that we ever say to our kids. Now, that's not to say that we buy our kids everything they want, no. you know, because there's certainly different conversations yeah. about, you know, what's money, and money <laughs> management and value. Yeah, it's all that. Right. And yep. earning things and doing things on your own. But um, we don't say to our kids, we can't afford that. Right. And so the conversation that I heard when I was a kid is very different than the conversation that our kids hear. You, I think too, you've got to make sure that you are, that when you're having these conversations that um, just be aware of your conversation. That's like one of the most important things is just be aware of what you're saying and what you're thinking and what people are saying around you. If you start to be aware, you'll, you'll start to notice in a conversation who's kind of the one that sort of brings people down in the conversation. You'll sort of start to see what that is. You'll, yeah, you'll feel it. There's some people that like, every time you see them, you know, they're going to talk about who's sick or who just died or yeah. it's like, do, do we really have to talk about that every time I talk to you? Yeah. You know, yeah. but be around people that are going to elevate your thoughts and even challenge your thoughts in a good way. And that are going to make you feel good. And remember, you know, you're going to create a new comfort zone. That's okay. So three was, three was comfort zone. Number four was develop new relationships. So we talked about developing new relationships. How do you do that? Right? So one, leaving your comfort zone means you have to start to find and meet new people and start to, to develop a new comfort zone and a new level, a new way of thinking, a new way of talking. And um, that that's a good thing, right? Number four, again, is develop new relationships. I would encourage you to give to them. 
don't go into relationships saying, because if you go in thinking, yeah. I can't wait to learn what you learn. I can't wait to, to pick your brain. I can't wait to, well, listen, do more for them. Don't just, you know, I, I hear people call us a lot and say, can I buy you lunch? And, and honestly, well, it's a nice gesture. No, I don't want to sit for lunch because what you want is an hour of my time or two hours of my time to pick my brain. And while I don't mind that, my time is valuable. And so it's better if you connect with somebody by finding something that they want. For instance, if you want to get to know somebody, find out what their hobbies are. Find out what they like. You know, they're, one, of, one of the things, so let's talk about this. When we started Vester Pro, I knew that I had to get around somebody or people that understood how a coaching business worked on a big level. And I met a good friend of mine who now, he's become a good friend of mine now, Gerald Martin. And Gerald's part of our team and Gerald and Beth and their kids, they're all awesome. They're all part of our team now, but it didn't start that way. I met Gerald because I offered my time to go speak when he was speaking at a local event here. So I offered my time for free. I, I had nothing. I had no ulterior motive, but to offer my time. Because I know if you offer your time and you do things for other people, good things just seem to happen. People could say, well, you were lucky that happened to you. Was I? Did you offer to give a, an afternoon of your time to do it and put a presentation together and then go in and do it? Well, because if you didn't do that, you, you know, it's not luck, Right. So I, we did this, we went in and I, I gave a talk. And that night I made a joke on stage. I said, boy, you think this guy would take me out to dinner or something for helping him you know, with this room? And he did. So that night he went to dinner. And so we downed a couple bottles of wine that night and we started a friendship that night. Well, right after that, I left and I sent him a case of wine. Like I was thinking it was just three bottles of wine or something. It was nice, whatever it was. And I sent him wine. And that friendship developed. Now, nothing happened right away. Like, in other words, he sent this to me and said, thank you, man. This is, wow, great. And that's what he does in, that, that's what he did in that relationship. Now, over time, that relationship evolved. And that relationship became an association, which became a helpful association where I'd help him. It mostly he helped me, but then it became a friendship. And now it's a, now it's a mutually beneficial uh, friendship. We work together and, um, and it's awesome. And, but if I hadn't started by giving to him first, by giving of my time to present and then giving a nice gift to him, maybe it wouldn't have worked out. And I can think of countless, countless, every time we start a relationship with a new company that we love, if we have a good relationship, I'll send them out. I think we've done cookies and milk a few times some of yeah. our big, to some of our big companies that are marketing companies. We send them out cookies and milk or, or, or a big thing of snacks or a big or lunch for the day or some like a surprise, or you can go on a, uh, What's that, that company I use a lot now, Gold Belly? Yeah. And you can find all these cool meals all around the state or on the country. You can send that to people. Now, will it cost you $100? Yeah, it might cost you more. But what's, will, will anything come out from it? You don't know. It's a, it's a chance. It's a gamble. But by giving, they now know. Now, here's something else you can do. When you have somebody you want to get to know, find out what their hobbies are and give them things in their hobby. If they're a golfer, get them tickets to the masters, you know, find, find things that you can do or, or get them a, a gift card to Dick's or, you know, something to say, listen, I appreciate your time. I, I appreciate just being around you and thank you so much. Or send an article. Hey, here's an email. Here's an article I, I read about, you know, you love to fish. Hey, check this out. Have you seen this new thing? I just saw it and thought about you. You know, those kind of things show that you actually care about somebody else. And if you do that, you can build, you can start to build a strong relationship. So as you're during this process, right, you're evaluating your current friends. You want to be the person you want to attract. You want to um, get out of your comfort zone. That's crucial to get out of your comfort zone and then develop that new relationship and give to them. That's, that's important. And, and, and be yourself too, because, you know, I think yeah. even, even talking about this, you know, some of you are social butterflies and you'll have no trouble making friends whatsoever, but other people that are listening to this, I mean, the thought of even like, you know, initiating that kind of conversation might make you want to throw up. <laughs> so, you know, like take the pressure off of yourself and just like be yourself and see what happens naturally and organically and just kind of let it, let it flow. You know, you're not going to gel with everybody that you want to get to know, or you think you even want to get to know, and you might get to know some people and they're not who you thought they were. Um, that happens a lot, by right. the way. The, sometimes their, their public persona is not at all what you, you get to know them and go, huh. That wasn't what I was thinking. And maybe you weren't as successful as I thought. Maybe they put on a, they put on a facade right. that you didn't know. Right. They might have the house and the car, but they might be in debt up to their eyeballs. <laughs> if I have any cashola. Right. right. Yeah. So, so my point is to that though, just kind of, you know, don't let your mind play tricks on you with that and just kind of go in and, and be hopeful and, 
Um, but take the pressure off of yourself and just be yourself. I think that sometimes and this might be helpful as you, I'm kind of, I'm kind of backtracking a little bit here, but as you are trying to, to build solid relationships with people that you perceive as being more successful in you in certain areas, right? Whatever that area is, whether it's relation, relationship wise, financially, business success, whatever you think it is, you probably think they're out of your comfort zone. You probably think that you're not on the same playing field. You may have that. I'm so thankful that my dad instilled something in all of us boys. Well, he instilled it in me. My dad didn't care. My dad, we've lost him a few years ago and God, he's a big, big hole he left behind. But, but what he, he trained us on some amazing salt of the earth values. And one of those values was he didn't care if you were a billionaire, literally, I'll tell you a story about dad, a billionaire or if you were the guy out front digging the ditch by his yeah. by his property, like that, some, that he had to clear out the creek next to our house to get the rocks out, he didn't care. It didn't matter what you did for a living. All that mattered is that you were a good person and how you treated him and how you treated his family. And that's how he based the decision on people. I can remember my dad has brought people, but my dad, a <laughs> long time ago, brought a guy home one time that could, didn't have a place to stay that night. My mom was furious with him. He brought this stranger home. It was a weird guy. But, you know, dad, that was dad. He didn't care. But my dad also, one time, my mom and I were in a company called Metaluca. It was a network marketing company. We were there. I was, I was the, you know, one of the top levels in the company, um, higher up levels. And um, so we were on this cruise ship. And my mom did well with the company too. And so we're on this cruise ship and the owner of the company rented this cruise ship. He rented like a Carnival Cruise Line cruise ship. You know, there was two or 3,000 people from our company there. And the owner who's a billionaire, but it's also a farmer, like he owns 500 head of cattle and whatever he is, but he's a billionaire, but he doesn't act like a billionaire, which I always love that about people. But he, my dad was out one morning for a walk. My dad was an early riser. Well, so was this owner of the company. And dad sat down and had had a cup of coffee with Frank Vanderstoel. Now, this is a guy that everyone's trying to get his ear, right? He is the he is the head of the company. He is the founder of this, whatever they've done now, several billion dollars in revenue. He is the founder of the company and the owner of the company. Dad is at the table and sits down and has coffee. Doesn't even really know who he is. Like He's not, he's not even sure, you know, this is a guy that rented the boat. He doesn't know who he is and he doesn't care who he is. He doesn't care. <laughs> He doesn't care. And he comes back to the room. And I remember my, him saying to my mom, oh, I, had a, I had a nice dinner, a nice talk. I think he's, I think he's your boss. And she's like, well, who? She goes, he goes, ah, Frank, I think, right? Frank? And he goes, Frank, Frank Vanderstoel? He goes, yeah, I think so. He goes, well, that, that's the owner of the company. You, you, you can't just have breakfast with him. He goes, well, I did. And, and he had to know my dad. He didn't care. He didn't put the guy on a pedestal. Yeah. And he sat and had conversation with him and had a great conversation with him. And got to know him at a, at a human level. All of us have a human level. All of us have a human level. It doesn't matter what our title is, what our appearance is, what our relationship looks like with our spouse, with our kids. We might look like we're awesome, look like we're bad. It's a, none of that matters. It doesn't matter how much you have in the bank. None of that matters. We all still put our pants on one leg at a time. We do. <laughs> it's a dumb saying, but it's true. Yeah. We all do the same exact thing. So my point to that is that when you are upping your game, remember they're humans and they, they have fears just like you do. They've just figured out how to overcome them and they're going to teach you how to think differently just by being around them, but connect with them in a human level, not just a business level. Connect with them as a friend. Connect because when you build those kind of friendships, man, it's a game changer. It's a game changer when you have those kind of friendships and they take time to develop. That's the last thing I want to talk to you about before we wrap up today. And that is to make sure that you are cultivating that relationship. Yeah, very important. You got to cultivate any relationship. If you don't give it time, it won't grow, right? So send those things up, but don't stop sending gifts like that out. I mean, whatever it might be, or or help them or, or you know, find ways to give to them so they end up they'll, they'll giving to you. I'm thinking of a funny analogy right now. You know, you, you see these um, couples and you're like, oh my gosh, how did he get her? Or how did she get him? Because Are you referring to me? <laughs> no. I felt like that was where that was going. Just so you know, um, you know, because you, you have those preconceived ideas. Oh, he's out of my league or she's out of my league because of the way they look or what they have yeah. or whatever. And, you know, people might even think that of friendships, but what, to your point um, of cultivating that friendship, you know, when you do see those couples, you know, maybe the, maybe the girl is beautiful and the guy is not so attractive he cultivated that he cultivate, you know, maybe he has an awesome, some awesome sense of humor or 
stop. Just saying. <clears throat> you know, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Maybe he's like super kind and he just learned, spoke, knew how to speak her love language. But it's a matter of cultivating those relationships and making sure that the other person feels valued and important. If they feel like all you're doing is taking from them, that's not going to be a healthy exchange. Right. Find a way to be friend, find a way to cultivate, and that'll be it. So listen, so number one is evaluate. Number two, be be who you want to attract, right? Be the energy you want to attract, be who you want to attract. And be yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. You know, if, if you're trying to get attract that, don't act like a big shot. You know, check your ego just at the door yourself. and just be yourself. The, the, yeah, people, people, we respect that. Yeah. And and uh, here's one last thing I'll say about, about that part, um, getting out of your comfort zone. If you are the smartest person in the room. You're in the wrong room. You need to get into a new room. If you are the if you are the most successful person in the room, you need to get to a new room. If you have the highest net worth of your room, you need to get a new room. Right. If you're the happiest guy in your room or happiest girl in your room in your relationships, get to a new room. Right. Find find a way to elevate yourself to the next level, but you have to leave your comfort zone to get there, which is number three. Number four, develop that new relationship, you know, be a giver. And then number five is cultivate, cultivate that relationship and help it to grow. Because the only way, you know, energy flows where focus goes. No. Energy grows where focus goes. Energy grows where focus goes. Well, you know what I mean. (laughs) Something like that. I'm not sure if that came out right, but you know exactly (laughs) what I mean. So, so guys, I hope that helped you today. Anything else you want to say? I think, yeah, that was good. Okay. I liked it. So I think that was good. And we uh, hopefully helped you guys uh, understand. Except I am grateful that my honey has the kind of energy that I look for. And most of the time. Wow. Let's end <laughs> this now. I am had to take advantage of that. So good. <laughs> but no, I mean, I, just as a final thought there, I think it's really important that the closest relationships in your life, um, that you treasure those and keep cultivating those. It's not like that ever ends. You want to keep cultivating those and, um, you know, your, your significant other, your partner, your husband, your wife, whoever, that's the most important relationship that you need to, to keep growing and, and help each other. So if one person is down, the other person can help build you up and you don't want to be the one that your spouse feels drained when they leave the room or, or leave your company. That's true. So, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. That would not be good. So yeah. Well, good. Well, so I, I love you. I love you too. I appreciate your energy too. So everybody else now thrown up when they hear our sappy talk, <laughs> but it is what it is. So guys, thanks for being here today on the real estate of mind show with your host, Glenn and Amber Schwarm, and we help average everyday people create wealth through real estate investing and not just financial wealth, but wealth through every area of your life. Hope it helped. We'll see you on the next episode. See you next time.